want to learn how to take your Milky Way photography to the next level by combining AID noise with traditional image stacking. I'll explain it in this video. Using both methods together can drastically reduce noise, preserve detail, and create cleaner, sharper astro landscape images. I spend a lot of time thinking about how to best utilize the editing tools that are available for astro landscape photographers. In my last video, I explored the possibility that AID noise would replace image stacking. Of course, we aren't there yet, but I think that using AID noise in addition to stacking can significantly improve our images. Currently, the use of AID noise can leave some odd artifacts in the form of short trails that seem to come from the algorithm conflating several dim stars together. I've found through a bit of experimentation that these can be reduced by turning down the amount of force detail and luminance reduction that you use. Now my workflow is to introduce AID noise in the beginning while working with RAW files. I use either DxO's Pure RAW 5 or Adobe Lightroom Denoise because honestly I can't decide which one I like better. They both perform about as equally as you could ask, but for simplicity's sake maybe Lightroom gets the nod because you don't have to use an additional piece of software. Stacking after AI noise reduction will do something that AI can't, not yet anyway. By adding starlight from successive images and reducing random noise, it boosts the signal to noise ratio and makes the stars brighter, crisper, and cleaner. The results can almost rival tracked images, really only lacking the additional color saturation that process provides. For this demonstration, I'm going to use some images I captured back in April of 2023 at Cape Hatteras. The Outer Banks is one of the best places on the East Coast to capture astro landscape images. Very little light pollution and amazing foregrounds. It is well worth the trip. I already have the images loaded in Lightroom and I'm going to start by choosing the first one, switching to the develop module. And I'm going to change the color profile to adaptive color. I did a video a few weeks ago about using this for nightscape images and I'll link it above. Since adaptive color tries to balance the exposure of the image, I'm going to have to turn this down since obviously it's a night image and we're going to go down to about one and a half stops and the next thing I'm going to address is white balance I'm going to go to auto and see what Lightroom wants to use and I'm going to adjust just a little bit more to the cool side and take out just a little bit of that magenta next is down to Lens correction, I'm going to make sure that I'm removing chromatic aberration and enable the built-in profiles. I'm going to choose my lens and it'll automatically pick up that it's a Sigma Art. From here, we're going to go back up to detail and I'm going to enable denoise. Now, since I've already run it on this image once, it's not going to run again, but typically this process will take a minute or two. I'm going to zoom in so I can get a really good look and you can see where it's putting a little bit of artifact in there. I'm going to bring this intensity down to about there and I'm going to reduce the sharpening. We can see when we push the sharpening all the way up what that does and we don't want that. So I'm going to reduce the sharpening pretty much all the way down. If we add manual noise reduction it will flatten out the image a good bit so I'm gonna put just a hint of manual noise reduction in but not much I really want to let stacking do a lot of noise reduction so that's about all I'm gonna do there let's zoom back out I'm gonna open up my basic tab again now I'm gonna do some local edits and I'm gonna use masking to do that I'm gonna open up masking and I'm going to choose the AI landscape. This will target the sky, water, and the natural ground because each of these are going to require slightly different editing processes. I'm going to choose them, create the masks. Now we start with the sky. I'm going to give it some contrast, pull the highlights out, darken the shadows down, increase the whites, drop the black point back a bit, Give it a healthy dose of texture and clarity and a little bit of dehaze. Not too much. It will start to look very odd if you use too much dehaze. Now I'm going to edit the water a little bit. I'm going to push the water up and exposure. Give it a little bit of contrast. 
I'm going to push the highlights up a little bit to bring out some of the surf in this video in this image. Increase the shadows, increase the whites. I'm going to leave the black point alone, give it some texture and a bit of clarity. I'm going to I'm going to take a look at the dehaze. Maybe put just a little bit in, not much, just to give it some depth. And finally, I'm going to edit my ground, bring the exposure up a little bit, bring the highlights back. I'm going to bring the shadows up just a little bit so we get some more detail in here. But on the whites, I'm going to leave the black point alone, give it some texture, some clarity. And I'm going to leave dehaze alone with that. And there's a good bit of air glow. In this image, uh, a lot of green up here. I'm not too wild about that. I don't mind some air glow, but this is a bit much. So in this image, I'm going to come down to my color mixer and I'm going to drop my greens out just a little bit on luminance, down just a little bit. I'm going to drop just a little bit of the saturation out from the greens. And there we go. Once I'm done with edits, I've actually got a pretty decent single image that uh, I wouldn't have any problem continuing to edit or share, but I've got a couple of additional steps that I'm going to do here. Let's go back to the library module, and I'm going to select all 10 images in the stack, and I'm going to sync settings, and I'm going to include the masks. Since this is using the AI processes, it can take a little bit of time because it's having to run AI on each individual image. So I'm going to leave that there with you for just a few minutes. Now we see those edits have been pasted to all of the additional images. All the images are highlighted. Now I'm going to export them to I have a working drive is temporary storage. I'm going to make a few changes here so that I know which images are which. I'm going to save them out as TIFF 16 bit components. Leave image sizing alone. I am going to put a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Nothing else. And we're going to export. While we can see this exporting up here, I'm going to go ahead and launch the Starry Landscape Stacker. And we're going to choose all 10 images. Uh, for some reason, it is seeing them as darks, but they are not. So make sure they're all listed as lights. Continue. And I'm going to get rid of any of these red dots down here. They are not sky. Although if you see these little reflective things on the beach, that's what's spoofing the software. And I'm going to come in and make sure that I draw a nice horizon line up both sides. Fill in a little bit up here. And we're going to tell it to find the sky. It's a little sloppy over here on this left side. So I'm going to go in and clean that up. Everything else is covered. I'm going to align and composite. And then we're going to choose our composition algorithm. For these images with surf, I'm kind of liking this mean max horizon accuracy. So I'm going to go with that, save that current image to my image drive, and I'm going to save that out. Now we can close Starry Landscape Stacker. We're done with that. Now I need to pull this image in. To do that, I'm going to choose the folder that I'm working with in Lightroom, synchronize the folder. I like to flag the images so that I can quickly and easily find them later. And this is our final image. You can see a good bit of the noise has been cleaned up. We have a nice image to work with from this point on. This is the original image. This is where we are now. I'll take a look at those side by side. See a very noisy, grainy image has now turned into this. And we're going to take a look at the first image that we edited as opposed to the final image. You can see this one's got a good bit of noise in the foreground. Also up in the stars. It's been dealt with in large part through the stacking process. Now this final image could easily be tweaked a little bit more in Lightroom or shared from this point. It's got good color. It's a very nice image. Personally, I would take this image 
now and push it over into Photoshop to come up with some final edits. And this is my final edited image. That is AID noise plus stacking. I hope you got something out of this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Now get out there and capture some magic.